Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is a session on uh, advanced virtual presenting tips and tricks. So it's a follow on to a session I did last week with some more basic sessions. I'm going to start off by just really briefly um, going over the basics of that. At any point, use the chat window to ask any questions you might have. Um, anything that you need to know that I haven't mentioned, please go ahead and uh, ask it. Okay, so uh, these are the topics I'm going to go over. So we're going to start with a basic summary. Then I'll talk about sets, the stuff that you have around in a room that you need to use for recording. Then the videos topic, then an audio topic. Then I'll talk about software. Then I'll talk about some other hardware you might want. And then a uh, discussion of like online attention. How do you keep people's attention? How do you move forward sessions? What are some of the other things you could do other than just presenting? I will be focusing mainly on presenting in this session because that's what I do mostly. All right, the basics. Um, so first of all though, um, so let's see if I can bring up the polls. So what, launch poll, what as you go into your meetings, what percentage of people use their webcams? When you go to your online meetings today, um, please go ahead and choose one of those options. Is it you know, less than a quarter, less than a half, three quarters, or a whole? So please enter your options in there. We'll see how people are voting. All right, okay, it's actually surprisingly high. I would have thought it would be down into the first two groups, but right now it's looking like, oh, maybe it's two extremes. All right, so let's just end the poll there. So we've got uh, interesting combination. So we've got a bunch of meetings where almost nobody puts it on, uh, and then around the three quarters mark, and then a few people, I, 75 to 200%. That was a typo, obviously. Uh, oops, share results, there we go. So you can see there the results of the poll. Um, so people using it a little more than I expected. All right, so let's go over the basics of uh, webcams then. Uh, so these are the basics I went over on a previous session. So very briefly. Interesting. Uh, head position. So you don't want to look up your nose. Try and keep the webcam at eye level. Try and position yourself nicely in the frame. You might have to move your screen or put your computer up higher in order to do that. Two, lighting. Uh, try not to be a silhouette. I've got to call you out here. Is it? Uh, Anyas, uh, Anyas, sorry, Anyas, you're, you're a silhouette. I can, I can see a dark shadow in your webcam. So the problem there is, is the, uh, it's great. So you have a window, but the window is blowing out the rest. The window is the camera just automatically to your lighting. So how do you do that? With one, you can turn around and face the window. That can mean rearranging furniture. It can be a little bit awkward. Uh, or you can uh, put in extra lighting. I'll talk about different lighting choices in just a second. Then there's the gaze. Try as much as possible when you're presenting to look into the camera at your audience. It's really awkward to do. You'll find me, the, this whole procession looking down because that's where all my screens are. So I would endeavor to remember to look forward at each time. Uh, backgrounds. So there's a bunch of different options with backgrounds. I'll be talking about green screens and backdrops and things, but the ones that are built into the various software are also available. I, people tend to go a little overboard. I'd avoid the tropical ones personally, but that might be your character. In general, for work-related things, I'd recommend a subtle work setting. I think Zoom has some basic choices that are perfectly reasonable, fairly neutral. You want to keep the focus on you, not the background. If you have a beautiful home, by all means, put your beautiful home in the background. Although the problem there is you've also you've always got people the danger of people wandering into the scene. At least with a rag drop, that's not going to happen. Headphones, uh, you can get horrible audio lag with these uh, platforms. One of the problems is use, not using headphones. That introduces a lag because the computer has to do extra work to sort out the difference between the microphone and the loudspeaker. So use your headphones as much as possible. Also linked to this is uh, use a wired connection where possible. In theory, the, the Wi-Fi should be pretty fast, but wired is going to be much faster and much more reliable, especially if you're in any area where there's a whole bunch of different Wi-Fi signals. So if you're the only Wi-Fi signal, it's probably okay, but if there's a dozen others, you should probably go to a wired connection because they're all going to get on top of each other. So second, second poll, so we talked about other people. What about you? Um, where are the... Da, 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 da. There's a whole bunch of windows here. 
Next poll. I would like to know whether you actually use your webcam. So, uh, oh no, that's the end, end that poll. Sorry, I got the wrong one here. There we go, poll number three. So launch the poll. Do you use your webcam when speaking? So in general, I can see uh, I can see the from already in the session a whole bunch of people are using their webcam. So I'm assuming the answer is yes. So 100% say yes. I and mean, clearly this is the right group advanced. So I know my some of my relatives would definitely be at the bottom with the no way. There's no way that they're going to go on camera if they can avoid it. So in the poll, sure the results. Yeah, 100% on yes. Everybody who you know where it comes. Okay, great. We're in we're in the right place. All right, moving right ahead. So. Um, I'll go straight to what a lot of people want to do, which is video in front of PowerPoint. That's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, these are PowerPoint slides. As I move forward, I'm presenting in front of them. I think it's a relatively engaging way of presenting materials. So how do you do it? What's the fastest way possible to do that? Well, you can use a, some software called ChromaCam, ChromaCam.me. I haven't used this software because it only really works with Windows. Uh, you don't need a green screen. It can use uh, sense. You know, it can figure out what the background looks like. And uh, the pro version allows you to use PowerPoint slides as the background. Again, I haven't been able to run it because I'm on a Mac, but that could be a good option. Now, I, I use the Personified, it's the same company. They have a sort of a more advanced version. And that version, I found the video quality wasn't great. It was very jerky and gave a lot of halos around the green screen. So I don't know about the quality. See, somebody tested out. If anybody has tested out, please go on the, the chat and let me know. The way I'm going to be talking about for the rest of this session is video mixing. So basically, you take a camera view, and I have a green screen behind me. Then I'm using a separate video feed with uh, PowerPoint slides, and then I'm using software to mix them in real time that then I put out as a virtual webcam. So I'll be going through the steps to create that layered video look and how to get it out with the rest of this presentation. Uh, question for you. So this is not a poll, but a question. If you could just answer the chat, what type of advanced presentation are you thinking of doing? What's, what's your need? Why are you attending this session other than you, you know, you're bored and you had nothing else to do? Uh, if you're going to use some of these techniques, what are the sort of things that you had in mind? Please go into the chat if you could. And just give me a little bit of an idea so I can make sure that my presentation is tailored to what you actually need. So everybody jump to their keyboards. Rob, you said you were looking forward to this. Why was that? All right, doing better than being a voice behind a webinar PowerPoint slide. So you, this is a part of a presentation that you need to do. So you need to do a presentation as part of your work. You'd like to do that in a more engaging way. Okay, great. Uh, curious to learn new tips to make virtual sessions more and great. Okay, just your general knowledge, just in case you need it. If you have a specific like project in mind or an audience in mind, I, that would be really interesting to me. And then again, I can help uh, make sure that what I'm presenting is adapted. Uh, okay, here's a good one. So, and yes, thank you. Um, uh, for master classes, a wide range of customers attending. So you're doing uh, online learning, teaching people. The master classes, presumably this is going over topics like this, where we're, try we're trying to Inter entertain people, educate them. Interaction is important. Okay. Panel sessions. Okay. So towards right at the end of this, uh, Rob, we had a question. Uh, panel sessions is something I'll touch on. It's probably the hardest thing that you can do. So I'll talk about some of the challenges. Uh, and thank you, Tracy. We have uh, many customers suddenly pushed into presenting and we're trying to help them get new skills. Great. All right, we're recording this. We'll be able to send them the video. So if you've been sent this video, you are the audience. This is for you. Um, all right, so let's talk about sets, getting everything ready to present in this way. So you'll need to, in order to do something in front of PowerPoint, you'll need to have a green screen of some kind. Um, so you can, you can buy these online. They can be foldable ones that are self-standing, or it can just be a green sheet that you hang up on the wall. Uh, here's a colleague of mine that has just Velcroed her green, it's a piece of blue-green cloth, cloth that she has Velcroed to the ceiling with sticky Velcro. Uh, very effective, nice heavy cloth, not too many shadows, works well. Then you have these uh, backgrounds, uh, backdrops. So you can buy these around 20, 25 euros. There's lots of them available on Amazon. And to give you an idea of what that looks like, let me swap to a different camera view. So here is... 
a live backdrop. So I shall move to the my other studio. All right, this is going to require some gymnastics. There we go. So, so here, if I uh, if I carefully manipulate the view, you won't see the edges. Anyway, so you get to see this is a backdrop. You can see I've just sort of hung it. Now I, I've stuck it on a a roller up here. So the idea is I can roll this up and down when I don't need it. I've stuck it onto the tape with some very inelegant uh, sticky tape. But honestly, when when this is working and it's a nice sort of cropped view, it really looks quite natural. It looks like a real wall until you uh, until you show people. So that's uh, one way of doing it. Let's move back to there and the next slide. Uh, so let's go look at the rest of the set. So that's the vector. So let me show you around. So we're talking about lighting now. Lighting, so many different options. Uh, let's go quickly through some of them. Back to the camera. This time I'll use it as an explanation camera. So we'll start with the little ones. This is a little light. This is a design for photography. So this is a Godox uh, 36 LED. I can't remember what it costs. It's a few tens of euros. They come in various sizes. That's a 64 LED one. And what's nice about these is they, they interconnect. So you can actually sort of slot them together and um, you can use them for to create bigger sets of lighting. So that's small little lights. And then what you do is you put one of those on a small tripod, something like this. Uh, stand that up. You can put that by your camera somewhere and that can provide nice lighting uh, for your face. Then we have bigger choices. Oh, it, it can be just whatever you have around the house, by the way. So it could be, you know, I found an old, uh, this is a torch. That's actually pretty bright. The camera doesn't show you how bright it is, but using that would be really quite effective. Um, then we got bigger lights. So next up in the photography stakes is these kinds of things. So this is also photography lights. Um, let's turn that on. And the advantage of these is you can actually change the color. So you see the, the temperature there is the five, 6,000. Let me put this down for a second and see if I can adjust it in real time. So if I change this dial, now that's the, da, 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 that's the color temperature. You can tell I haven't used this very much. Now that's the channel. Oh, well, anyway, you get the idea. You can, you can make it a lot more orange. I'll figure out how to do that next time we do this demo. Um, so I'm using a couple of these. This one, I, this one here I usually use down below to, to make the green screen. So here's the green screen, by the way. I didn't proper, properly show you. It's just a, it's on the, a sheet on the wall that I use these pincers to keep it nice and tight and flat. And then this light here is designed to fill in the green screen shadows. And there's another light up at the top of the green screen that I forgot to turn on, interestingly enough. So up there you see, and the advantage of this is it's got a remote control. So I can, uh, I can, I can change the color and things up there. And that separates the, the hair when you're looking at this. You get a hair light up here for extra quality. Next up, bigger lights. We've got ring lights. So this is the kind of thing that uh, YouTubers use. Um, it gives a nice shadow around the, around the the face, it's pretty good against avoiding shadows on the backdrop, which are hard to deal with. Then you have these. Uh, I put this up especially for you. I don't usually use it. It's a big photography soft light. So this is literally a light bulb with a, unfortunately the camera doesn't go that far. <laughs> so it's a light bulb with a, an umbrella on top. Again, you get all of this in, if you want to do portrait lighting, just look up portrait lighting and you'll find it. And then I actually have some extra spotlights on the ceiling here because this was originally going to be a photography studio when I first set up my attic room. Um, so those are the lights, different choices. Um, then you obviously need a whole bunch of stands to put them on. So there are various types of uh, lighting stands or traditional tripods or the little tripods we saw uh, that you need. And then a monitor. So this is kind of important. I've got I'm only using one monitor right now, so I have the PowerPoint slides on that monitor, and that's the one that I've got under the light. We'll see how we use that in just a second. Go back to the main camera. Any questions at all so far? No, okay. 
go ahead. Um, virtual Studio. So this is what I've been uh, playing around with recently. Is a Virtual Studio is basically a bunch of pictures or a 3D model. And the idea is that you can then use it as a, a real studio experience. So I can, you can have an opening shot. Let's say, Rob, you wanted to do a panel session. You'd have an opening shot like this. So welcome, everybody, to the panel. On these screens over here, you'd have an introduction. Then um, I would do the intro uh, on this view. So hello, everybody. You know, welcome to the panel. We're going to be discussing blah, blah, blah. Then I could do a, we could discuss with people. So I could have somebody uh, appearing on this screen here uh, or, you know, just do my slides here in this view instead. So different, different options. Uh, back here. All right, so let's virtual sets. Any other questions there? No, nope, I'll go right ahead. So uh, video next. So we talked about lighting. More light, the better, basically, if you can. Uh, you can spend a fortune. It Honestly, make do with what you have around the house to start. And then if you want more convenience, LED lighting is a lot more convenient than the older style bulbs. But uh, it's you want to be able to vary the lights easily. Video. So you get lots of different video. How are you going to take the image of the person speaking? So first, you can use the webcam. The webcam inside your computer is probably not very good. Um, not very good quality. I can just. I think I have my webcam here as one of the options. So this is this is the what my webcam looks like. It's actually not very good quality. I, it's, I've got a nice MacBook Pro from last year. You know, it's a very powerful machine, but the webcam is actually very basic. It's designed to fit into the screen rather than the quality. It doesn't look too bad here, to be honest, but in general, you can do better. What you can do is, um, if the colors are off, you can use a, an application in the computer to adjust the webcam. So maybe you want to make it less green or brighter or, or shader. You can actually get utilities that allow you to do that as part of your PC setup. Next up, uh, using your mobile phone as a webcam. So this is what we've actually been, you've actually seen this in action. Um, so here is, I'm using my mobile phone uh, tethered via USB as a, so let's just go straight into here. Um, and what I'm actually doing in this case is I'm just running a regular, it's a camera basically, and I'm just using that screen input for the software we're going to see in a minute. This is ManyCam, and it allows uh, using the mobile camera as an input into the session. So it's, it's nice quality, really quite responsive. Um, yeah, thoroughly recommend it. So you, there's one, I'm using ManyCam, there's an app called Epoch Cam that you can use. Um, yeah. Uh, there's green screen apps. In fact, if you want to do straight from the image on your phone in front of a green screen, there's actually applications that will take out the, the green screen for you directly on the phone before it sends it anywhere. So vScope is one I tried out the other day, for example, worked quite well. The other alternative is to use HDMI out. So instead of here, I'm just using USB. But you could actually use uh, the USB, the HDMI adapter, from here, and then it becomes like any other digital camera that we'll see in a second how that works. Uh, the advantage of that is it is a little more convenient than having to set up the apps, maybe. Again, there's just lots of different choices. So next, <clears throat> if you want to go beyond your mobile phone, um, there are webcams. So you can buy an external webcam. Um, I brought one with me and I was going to show you, but basically the Logi Logitech webcams that you can use. Uh, things like this one, and some of them have like 3D built in, and they're going to be better quality than the one built into your computer. They just plug into a USB socket. Digital cameras. So I'm using a digital camera. I'm using, uh, probably can't see here. Maybe if I try and zoom in. There you go. So that is, it's a bit hard to see there. Oop, up, 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 I'm on the wrong view. So it's a bit hard to see there, but that is my Sony digital camera. Let's see if I can get it a bit closer so it isn't, isn't quite as blown out. You kind of seen this, I can see it on the screen. And then that is plugged in via a cable to this box here. It's called an Elgato Cam Link that converts the HDMI that's coming in from the camera into a USB. And then it appears as a virtual webcam. 
Um, that and then this is the image that you're saying. This is the, the camera. It's nice quality, uh, and then you can zoom a bit more, so it's a little more flattering than the wide angle that you typically get with uh, with smaller webcams and so on. All right, poll time. Honestly, the trickiest thing for me so far is trying to figure out how to do polls. I haven't done the polls before. So polling. Stop that one. I forgot to stop that poll. Okay, next poll. What camera are you using today? Launch the poll. All right. So hopefully you should see a poll up on your screen. So are you using the PC webcam, a uh, separate webcam, a phone, tablet camera, uh, either directly? So you can actually, there's one thing I forgot to mention is you can obviously just attend a Zoom session directly on your phone or tablet. Then it obviously uses the camera for the phone and tablet. And to be honest, that's actually really good quality. And today's phones and tablets are really optimized for graphics and, and camera work because that's what they're used for. So um, you could do worse than just using your iPad, for example, to attend a Zoom call. Um, if you're just uh, attending or you want to just do a simple, a straightforward presentation and have a decent camera. All right, so everybody, everybody, everybody's on their PC webcam, okay. Uh, good to know. Let me share the results. Uh, so one thing, that I, honestly, if you have a, a phone, recent phone, I recommend giving that a go. The, one of the advantages is you can put it at eye level. You can move it separately from what you're doing with your screen, which is just uh, can be convenient. Uh, so and yes, I've just, and yes uh, your, your image is looking much better now, much brighter. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is, I'm just looking across now. Everybody else here is doing a great job with the, with the lighting and head positioning and great. Next, teleprompters. Uh, so this is, this is the, the sort of the last barrier. If you ever, I see after what it's been a month and five weeks or something now, I'm starting to see people get all, almost all the rest of it right. But let's face it, almost nobody had a teleprompter at home. So you still see a lot of people who are reading from a script and you can't read from a script and look at uh, the camera at the same time. So how do you deal with that? Uh, a couple of different solutions. So one is you can get a teleprompter software that you just put onto your phone and then you put your phone as close as you can get it to the lens and then your eyes aren't moving that much as you're reading from the script. Um, but you can still tell that people are reading from a script. The next option up is to use uh, like proper teleprompters. And the way teleprompters work is that they have a semi-mirrored effect on them. So that the, the camera is viewing through here. And then what you do is you put a telephone underneath down here that's reflected in this semi-transparent glass. And so you can see the words on the screen and then you're looking directly at the lens while reading the words. It still takes a little bit of practice. They're, this, they're really awkward to set up and use, I have to say, but I've used them a couple of times now for pre-recorded videos and it's certainly a lot easier than trying to uh, learn a 15 minute script. So if you really want to take it to the next level, uh, they come in different sizes. I've got a, uh, an iPad one that's pretty big. This, the, this, this little one that works with a, a telephone is actually a lot more convenient because it doesn't block the view of the camera. So that as I'm viewing the camera screen that's flipped up, um, I can still see it above this little window. All right, so that's teleprompters. You can spend a lot of money doing all this. I have done. <laughs> so just buy what you need. All right, so uh, we've got a question here or a comment. Um, tried Epoch Cam with Zoom. Ah, okay, so just recently, just a couple of weeks, they changed the Zoom disabled virtual webcams. So uh, the first solution is to downgrade. Uh, if you hunt around a little bit, you'll find the version eight, I think it is. You can install that, it still works. It's what I'm using right now is the version eight of Zoom, still works with virtual webcams. Then there's a more recent solution where you have to put a little bit of code in. Um, it turns if you're Windows or, or Mac. But apparently there's some things you can do to, to quote unquote unsign the application. I haven't gone there yet. Um, but there is a way you can use the latest version with a virtual webcam, but you have to do some work. And basically everybody is hoping that Zoom and Apple and who, whatever security issues they have 
they sort it out and it'll get easier. I'm pretty confident that there will be a way of doing this. It's just a victim of a short time uh, hack because of the problem. So best practice to keep attention interaction. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. So polls, yeah, obviously is one we'd like to, uh, like to try. Uh, Q&A, uh, making sure that you do watch the feed. Now having a separate monitor is really important for this so that you can have the chat feed and still present your PowerPoints. Because I, one of the problems I see people doing is they have their PowerPoints on their PC screen and they can no longer see what's going on in the meeting. So they can't interact with the audience. So uh, great question. I'll come back to that in a little minute as we go through more of the technical stuff. Screen sharing. So we need that PowerPoint somewhere. So how do we do that? Well, the way I've said it is uh, you go to the second monitor and then you, this is the easiest way to do it is you then put PowerPoint on that monitor. You can also put a teddy bear there if you want to keep attention. If, you're, if you forget to look at the screen, I typically put the teddy bear up by the, up by the camera I forgot today. <laughs> anyway, so you put your PowerPoint slides over there. And now, one thing you have to do is by default, as soon as you go into presentation mode, it blocks both screens, right? It puts a copy on here and a copy on your monitor. So you have to go into PowerPoint and do set up show. Uh, and then you say browsed by an individual uh, window. So this, I can actually show you this. Whoops, go back a second. I can show you this. So this is actually a window on my screen. Okay, so this is my second monitor. And what it does is it makes it a window that can be put in here like this. And then I've maximized that to the, to the whole monitor, uh, to the full size of the video. And then what's nice is, so this is my second, I could actually have another application running here and I could swipe between them on a Mac in any case. Uh, but that's basically how you have to set that up. Uh, other things you can do, you can do uh, screen share, you can do whiteboarding. I could uh, take my phone here and put some whiteboarding software. Microsoft has some that's compatible across lots of different devices. This is the one we use at SAP, so I recommend that. Uh, you can use a sort of document cam. So the idea is that if you want to just share something written, you'd simply turn, move to, you know, I could have my pen here and I'd be drawing something here and you'd share a drawing. Uh, you could use it that way. Um, again, these, these kinds of bendy ones are actually pretty good for that. And GoPros, little GoPro cameras. If you have, uh, if you have one lying around or your kids have one lying around, you can sort of put it at a, an angle like that with the bendy legs and then it's pointing down and it's got a very wide angle. Works really quite well. I've seen it used uh, quite effectively online. Next, all right, ooh, we've got to, got to get through the next one. Audio is a huge pain, so very quickly. There are a gazillion choices, and I'm convinced that audio people go out of their way to make it just as complicated as possible. So I'd apologize if you're an audiophile. So let me go through the different choices quickly. Um, so I'm using a little lapel mic here. It's by a company called Boya. I recommend it because it has two modes. It has a mode where you can use it with a smartphone, uh, unpowered and it has a mode you can use it with a camera, powered. So that's useful. It's not expensive. I think it's 20, 20 euros, something like that. If you want to go higher end, you can have these kind of lapel mics. This is a sure little lapel mic. It's a lot more expensive. But this one only works uh, with computers and cell phones. And you need an adapter, of course, to connect it to your uh, telephone. Then you have to be careful about the different types of um, ending. Let me swap over to here again. Okay, so you see here, this is a regular audio mic. It has those, uh, though this is one that is like has four bands. So it works with a camera or a PC. If I show you one like this, this is another kind of microphone. This one only has three bands. And guess what? They need completely different adapters and they use completely different systems and it's really awkward. So you have the three band type, for example, you want to plug it into a computer, you need one of those. If, sorry, if you have a four band type, you need one of those. I can, anybody's interested and I can go in a lot more detail, but it, it took me forever to figure out which ones were which. Um, 
and try and sort it out. Then there are these kinds of microphones. This is actually designed to cut out extra background noise. So let's say I wanted to go out on the balcony and I want to do a presentation. This is the one I'd have to I'd use. The Pell mics are actually pretty good for this too, but this is the one I can get right close to my mouth. Now this uses the older, really annoying X, uh, what's it called, XLR uh, mount. And then you'd have to have an adapter to adapt it, to plug it into just about anything. And then you need preamps and things, it's super complicated. Again, I just go with this little Boya app, uh, uh, amp, looks really, really convenient. Okay, editing, if you're gonna do pre-recording stuff, if you don't want to do it live, you just take the video recording, you take the PowerPoint recording with something like Camtasia, and then you use uh, Premiere Pro or something to edit them together. So if you're not doing a live presentation and you want to put in the work and make it really slick, you can just use video editing and you can really have all the specs, uh, effects and so on. I've done a fair amount of that recently. Various sessions you'll see coming up for SAP. Um, but here we're talking about live mixing. So how do I do that? Well, I'm using this. Uh, Software called ManyCam. So let's swap back to here. Oh, you're going to get the video picture and picture effect here. So basically, there's a whole bunch of presets along the bottom. And then each of these is a combination of different layers. So let me go to the ManyCam software. I apologize, one second. Seem to have lost my mouse. That's interesting. Minicam. All right. So here's the Minicam software. Now, on the right hand side here, we have the, what's called these presets. So here, for example, you can see that my I've got my screen. That's the C two twenty seven F three ninety, and then above that, I have my iPhone. So basically, here in the background, we have the PowerPoint slide, so there's the PowerPoint slide over there. It's coming in over here as an extra layer. And then this part of the image is what you're seeing with the camera, which is why you're getting the inception effect. Okay, so you basically, you, and then you can create these different presets. Um, so I can go to, like, here's the normal preset, for example. Here's the, you know, I'm, like, uh, here's the presets I've got for the different uh, studios all set up down here. And I'm clicking some macro buttons to go between ones and the others. So that's how I set it up. So let's see, I'm using ManyCam. Another option is called um, OBS Studio. If you're using Windows, OBS Studio is free. So that's probably a better choice. And again, it turns up as a virtual webcam in your uh, software, if Zoom is being nice. Any questions there? Uh, so yeah, Zoom does let you uh, log in many times. So again, if you want to, you can actually log in with a cell phone, with a with a phone, and with uh, a uh, your PC, and that's an easy way to share, like a camera with one and document from another, and so on. So good point, Rob. Other hardware, if you really want to get complicated, you can have a gazillion cables. I've got cables everywhere here, HDMI, all the cameras have different HDMI, different audio cables. Um, if you want to, you can go the full switcher route. So this is, um, I've been playing with this. So this is an actual hardware version of the, the thing we just, the mini cam. So you can actually do it as a box. It's called an ATEM mini, it's uh, a few hundred euros. Uh, but it basically takes these HDMI inputs and then you can actually cut from different cameras and it all is doing it all in the hardware. So, you know, it, you'd avoid some of the problem. It works with Zoom, for example, <laughs> because it's not a virtual web webcam. It ends up as a, an actual webcam. To be honest, I think it's overkill. I, I bought this as I thought it might be an easier way of doing things. But for right now, I think the many cam that I'm going with is actually easier. Other things to serve around you. <sighs> I haven't got this mastered yet, but the idea is that you can use extra keyboards to move between different devices. Um, I can actually do this hands-free, for example, um, thanks to this thing down here. So I have a foot, foot pedal that I have set up. So I can then go and set it up so that I can move my slides backwards and forwards the different views. Um, that's like, again, if I'm doing pre-recording, that's actually really useful because it means you've got your hands free, you don't have to have a clicker. 
online attention. So apologize for, you know, Agnes, who talked to ages ago about this, we didn't get around to it. So we could do an entire separate session on online attention, really, right? This is, uh, this is mainly about technology today. But it's, you have to first uh, amp up the enthusiasm compared to a normal session because you, everything gets reduced. You have to practice as a presenter because it's really hard. You have no idea what audience is out there. So you just have to keep speaking, hope that they're interested. Uh, you have no feedback and that actually takes a while to get used to. Uh, structure, so ideally, I find at least it's very easy to completely lose track. And so if you try and say, now we're gonna talk about video. Now we're gonna talk about uh, audio. Now we're going to talk about lighting. I could have done a better job on this session of really delineating it so that people know when you're coming back. So put in prompts to bring people's attention back. So now that we've covered that, or, you know, uh, because I find myself, I know about one topic, so I fade away, and then I only come back into the conversation when I'm halfway through the next topic, where I should have started listening earlier. So try and be structured. Make sure that people know when you're going to talk about different things. Polls, we had to go at some polls today. Um, it can be useful for gaining information, but also it's more interactive. Q&A, actually follow the Q&A, encourage people to ask questions. Maybe um, put some people in your audience to ask questions so that other people can see the questions asked. Make sure that people open the Q&A window. I didn't do that today. So like encourage people at the start of the session to say, hey, you know, there's a chat window there. Open it up so that you can see the questions that people are asking. and go ahead and ask your own. Uh, collaboration as much as possible. If you're really working on things with people, then use the collaboration options. So you can share your screen, you can do whiteboarding, you could do a Google Doc together. You know, there's lots of different options where everybody in the Zoom group can actually be adding onto a diagram, for example, as part of the joint whiteboarding that's built into the platform. You can also do breakout sessions where we're using this for so some executive meetings where we say, okay, here's the topic. We'd like you to go break out into groups and discuss the best way to handle uh, digital transformation in a COVID-19 world. You know, what are the challenges that you're facing? Go into groups, uh, designate a spokesperson, or probably better do it for them. And you know, such and such, please, could you collect the feedback and we'll invite you back in five minutes time to go over what you've uh, discovered. Kind of interactive techniques that work in workshops also work online. And in fact, I saw some research that showed that for some people, that kind of networking actually works almost better in the digital world than in real life. There's a whole bunch of people that are very happy to be at conferences, easy, find it easy to talk to people. A lot of people are not like that, especially more technical conferences. So uh, doing uh, interaction in a more digital world is actually less threatening for them and easier for them to engage. So try and use that as the advantage of the platform. Um, so that was the, so what are the, what are the best interactive sessions that you have seen? I'm going to talk about best practice here. Uh, so please in the chat window, what are the best ones that you have seen? And, um, you know, what do you see that? So uh, Tracy, what are the timings for virtual sessions? Do you think there's a set time to keep the audience engaged? This session is probably already too long. I hope to keep it to 40 minutes. I've been talking too much. Uh, trying to master the technology. I'm still practicing. Uh, I think 20, 25 minutes, honestly, is probably a good time on a particular topic area. Beyond that, I think you're going to lose people's attention. So you can try and mix it up, put some quote-unquote fun stuff, uh, try and vary the content if you can. Um, definitely dependent on everything, the topic, the audience, the people, right? The, the, in general, keep it shorter than you expect. Um, Okay, so I've got use ment Mentimeter. So I don't, you mesh. So Mentimeter, I don't know Mentimeter. So um, if you give me more information in the chat or unmute yourself and, and tell us more, I'd love to know more. Um, so thank you, Tracy, for saying this. You didn't think it was too long. Good. It feels like it's too long, and I feel like I'm rushing some important topics, but you know, it's always a combination. Uh, one thing I didn't cover here is if you're doing a Zoom webinar, so this is a Zoom meeting, not a webinar, uh, because I wanted to make sure that people could intervene if they wanted to. But if you're doing a webinar, then the difference is that um, you can do Q&A &A with voting up and down. And I honestly, it's one of my favorite interactions with larger groups is that you can uh, ask people to ask the top questions. 
So Rob, getting back to your uh, question about panels. So this is the way you do it with the panel is this kind of live interview session. So we talked about how you'd set it up, but you can have an interviewee. Let me go over this side. So I'd be the, inter I'd be the host and we could actually have this as the Zoom session in this window. And you could actually have several different people up here. So we could have like four panelists or one at a time. Uh, I can't show it to you because of the way I'm doing this recording, but just imagine this. So I'd be, I'd be here. This screen would actually be the Zoom session, and, but you would only see the person that you're, is answering the question or the, the, the group view. So that you can actually do. I'd be testing it out. It would, and then you can give that recording to people. That works really quite well. Um, yeah. Uh, so best practices. Yes, please. Any, I always like there's more than one speaker. Yep. Um, yes. So I, I, this I did with many camps. So Rob, what's the many camp part? So yeah, it's good to have more than one speaker. Rob, I completely agree. Uh, apologies, you're, you're stuck with me in this one. Uh, in this I did with many cams. This, oh, the second window, yes. So the picture in picture is with many cams. So I use, um, in fact, three different inputs. So I've got the background. Then I've got me on a green screen, made transparent using the memory cam. I didn't show you the chroma key, but basically you go in and you choose, you say, this is the color to make transparent and there's some settings to make it as clean as possible. But then you have those two images and then you put a third one, which is the, um, the Zoom session as that. So let me try and do that just to, to show that it works. So let me, what I'm gonna do. So I put my PowerPoint to one side. Now I'm going to move my Zoom session, which I've had down here on my, my Mac screen, for convenience, I'm gonna put it up to the main screen. All right, so you've got the inception thing going on. But now, if I um, pin Rob, I hope you don't mind me using you, Rob, okay. <laughs> so now you are pin video. So now if I go to one of my studio views, now nah, this is why it doesn't quite work. Um, I'm recording, so it's not gonna work, all right. So let me go back and pin me. All right, so if I go to gallery view maybe. No, it's not gonna work. All right, it's because I'm recording that it's, uh, that it's not gonna work. Go back to speak of you. All right, so you're just gonna have to imagine. So this is Zoom here though, right? So imagine, instead of this repeating video here, Imagine if we had you folks as a gallery view in this window or as an individual speaker, Rob, you would actually take up this whole screen. So I would be over here. I could be asking a question. You would answer. Everybody could hear your answer. And then um, I could go up to the top of the screen up here and I could actually choose to pin somebody else. So under the options here for the different videos, if I go to you and this, for example, I have this thing here that says pin video then you would become the video attendee here. Uh, again, I can't do that because then that won't record, right? You won't, you'll stop seeing me in this case, but it, as long as I wasn't recording, it would work fine. Um, all right, then I can just slide to go back to my view. Oh, you know, I, now I can't see Zoom though. All right, so I have to put Zoom back, sorry. <laughs> all right, this is where I might move to a second Monitor, another monitor as well. I got an extra monitor down there that I haven't been using, but that one down there, that one is probably gonna be put up so that I've got the two monitors up here. I probably have the two monitors, one here and one over here, one with the PowerPoint slides and then one with uh, Zoom on there so that I can keep track of everything at the same time. It, it requires a whole bunch of multitasking all at the same time. It's really quite complicated. Uh, all right, so I apologize, I've gone, I've gone over time already. Uh, anybody have any final questions before I let you go? And then I actually have to get ready for a, another recorded session that I'm gonna be doing in just a minute. We're gonna do some recording for some uh, sessions on uh, resilience for small and medium-sized organizations using uh, uh, from some of our SCB experts. 
Uh, lots of pressure. <laughs> so Tracy, lots of practice to get to this level. So, I mean, I've deliberately gone way overboard, right? Because I wanted to take it to the next level with the extra camera and uh, just showing you off the lighting and the setup. Honestly, for the actual standing in front of a slide, saying something and moving it forward, it really isn't that complicated. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've been showing you, you don't really need. Honestly, you, like I said, I, I started with the chroma cam. If that works, that's all you need. You don't even need a green screen. And you just put your picture in front of the, of the background and then you go ahead. And it's afterwards, all of it has just been about quality and trying to, to have fun with different options and show and tell and things. I'm gonna need a bigger house. Yes, so this room is not that big, but it is dedicated to this. If I had to pick it up and put it down and everything, that would be really annoying. Um, so, you, but honestly, from what I've seen your webcam, Rob, you, you've got enough space. Like just that wall behind you, you put, you just put one of these nice brick, um, one of these nice brick, you just need one of these, one of these behind you. That'd be, that, that would be great. Or you, and then you, or, and or a green screen behind you. Actually, it's already pretty green. You can probably use that background. I'm sure it works great as it is. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for this opportunity to practice. <laughs> I hope it's been useful. Um, I've learned a whole bunch, so thank you for your help. And um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, T Elliot at TimoElliot.com or Timo.Elliot, two Ts at SAP. Or you can follow me on Twitter. And uh, you please don't hesitate to uh, ask anything you need. More than happy to help you with your presentations online. And uh, let's build the new best practice together. I will uh, stop the recording there for the folks that have been uh, watching. Thank you.